Investors that have access only to information displayed as public quotes may be harmed. Market participants are able to flash orders and avoid the need to make the order publicly available. I would note that other market practices may have similar opaque features, and as such, the Commission is continuing its review of other forms of trading that lack transparency. All right. That was SEC Chairman Mary Shapiro speaking out last week after the SEC commissioners proposed banning flash trading. That's the practice in which exchanges and trading platforms would give some clients access to information about a share order for a fraction of a second before it's shared with other trading platforms. William O'Brien is the CEO of Direct Edge, the company that helped pioneer flash trading. And this is his first interview since the SEC made its proposal known. William, good to have you with us, Bill. I'm glad to have you come back. Thanks. Ben. What's the status right now? We know it's not it's not banned. They put this out for public comment, right? I mean, this follows New York Senator Charles Schumer's call to ban it. He recommended that to the SEC. Now they put this out to public comment. What's the chronology of events? Well, from a procedural standpoint, the SEC is taking exactly the right approach. They basically put a proposal that would restrict uh, the use of certain types of technology, commonly referred to as flash orders, um, by taking away a certain exception uh, to the quote rule, which is under which they were allowed to occur. And there's going to be a 60-day comment period to look at what impacts that would have on the market for the trading between exchanges and non-exchanges, uh, any other ancillary impacts, questions from the industry as to um, whether or not it would address any real or perceived inequities about our current market structure, and that's the right approach to take, to get feedback from the industry, to look at the actual data, because despite uh, a lot of the controversy about um, these types of uh, orders and technology, there's really no data to support a lot of the concerns, and, and frankly, our own data shows that um, the retail brokers and others that are using these for the benefit of their customers are seeing better prices 10, 15 percent of the time. So when you have a... So are you writing, are you busy writing a big letter to Mary Shapiro? Are you going to put up a, a, a comment to, the, to what they're saying? Absolutely. We, we've written letters in the past in response to proposals from other exchanges, but that's why you have a 60-day comment period rather than a rush to judgment. It gives everybody the opportunity to take a breath, think about the intended and unintended consequences, look at the actual data as opposed to the conjecture, and come to the right outcome for the benefit of all investors. All right. I, I have an idea of what you might be writing to uh, to Mary Shapiro and the SEC. Can you give us uh, some some clear thoughts about, as to what you're going to propose today? Sure. So, so it's less about any one particular technology, but we really pioneered and using flash technology as part of it, a way to build a bridge between exchanges and other forms of liquidity, dark pools, for example. All right, just define dark pools for those that don't pay attention to this kind of topic all the time. Dark pools are kind of sources of a way to get a stock trade done outside of an exchange. And they you don't always, want someone to know that you're placing a big order for exactly, a specific stock. Exactly, and they've always existed, and they're routinely about 30% of the market. But the fact is that over the last few years, they've become a lot more automated, going away from doing it over the phone to doing it computer to computer. And what Direct Edge pioneered using Flash and other technologies was a way to build a bridge for investors who may not have access to dark pools, combining, combining access to dark pools with the certainty of an exchange execution at the same time. And that innovation has led to retail and other investors often getting better prices when they execute their trades and larger sizes than when they execute their trades. But is, I mean, isn't the bad publicity that has been surrounded? I mean, I, all right, I take that back. Isn't the publicity that has surrounded, I'm not going to characterize it, the, the, the publicity that has surrounded Flash trading, isn't that enough to kind of say, you know what, for the real advantage, we might as well not do it anymore because this way, at least everyone's going to get the same, they're going to get the same treatment. Well, I think we all are stewards of investor confidence, and we have to make sure that people understand that our markets are fair, which they are. It's really, in many ways, never been a better time uh, from an efficiency, a liquidity, and a transparency perspective to be trading U.S. stocks. But that's why you have a common period. Rather than uh, emotion and suspicion, you get to look at hard data and the facts, getting input from everybody in the industry to come to a real informed decision about what the right way for our market structure to evolve is. And even in this most recent proposal on Flash, the SEC, I think, rightly noted, this is part of a much bigger uh, set of issues regarding how our market structure has evolved in the last few years and how regulation should adapt. Um, only when dealing with that holistically can you really get a good outcome. Because if you, if you ban these types of orders and these types of technology, it could leave dark pools uh, stronger than ever without retail investors having really meaningful access to them. And is this why? Because the ability to sort of display the offer or the bid 
that millisecond before it goes to another trading platform, that's no longer going to be an option well, for people? Well, because orders in dark pools typically are never represented on exchanges. So when Direct Edge pioneered these programs, they recognized that while those orders may not be on exchanges, if we use Flash or other technology, they may actually be willing to fill one of our customer orders. So that creates a bridge rather than a retail broker or other investor having to find you know, the 30 different dark pools out there and ways to efficiently access them all at the same time, we give them an integrated a consolidated way to do that and get better prices and larger sizes when executing their trades. All right, so the idea is that a lot of these trades might actually go to these, as you described them, dark pools right. in order to take advantage of certain situations that now they're taking advantage of because they're able to use flash trading technology. Well, it's that those dark pools are going to be there regardless of whether they're so you're not going to ban not. those, so that's right. maybe so where, the, where the trade is going to leak. If you just eliminate flash and do nothing else, you basically take away a tool that retail investors and their brokers had to access those dark pools without any other meaningful alternative. All right, and is this just going to be something that affects the, the world of equities, or is this going to bleed over into the world of stock options? No, it's going to bleed over, and it's, it, I think it's a much a larger and different set of issues in, in, in stock options. Um, use of flash orders, often called step-up orders in, in, in options terminology, has been uh, fairly widespread for several years. There's a lot of different market structures within the options exchanges, different fees that are charged, uh, and the use of these order types are much more inimical to the market structure of options and equities, and they, they're going to be dealt with altogether. How did something as seemingly as arcane as flash trading turn into such a hot political topic? I mean, that, that'll be a fascinating book for you or someone else to write someday, I think, and this goes back to us all being stewards of investor confidence, it's been such a competitive battle among exchanges. I mean, our market share at Direct Edge has grown uh, from less than 2% two years ago to 13% in, in August, uh, not only with the number three market overall in the U.S., and some markets like for NASDAQ stocks, we're number two. And I think the, the competitive forces oftentimes uh, trigger the use of market structure uh, debate as a, as a weapon, so to speak, but it really uh, tapped into a vein of investor skepticism that I think we all have to work to dispel. All right. I want to thank you very much, Bill O'Brien. Looking forward to hearing what you've got to uh, propose to uh, Mary Shapiro and the, uh, the SEC regarding flash trading. Maybe get those, those comment letters uh, when you get a chance. Thanks very much, Bill O'Brien, coming thank to you, us Sam. from Direct Edge. Appreciate it.